welcome our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. Welcome to today's edition of Business Morning with me, Bosin Omofayi. Let's get the show started still on the wranglings around Nigeria's new minimum wage conversation. Now, the labor unions is taking the new uh, story or the old story into a new arena, and that's politics. The Labor Congress uh, on Thursday warned that any state governor that move against the new minimum wage will be voted out in the 2019 general elections. Uh, two days ago, the governors have come together under their own umbrella and says if the 30,000 and a new minimum wage level is forced on them by the Labor Congress, they will have to revisit uh, what you called the trimming of the labor force, uh, that is the civil service. 24 hours later, labor has since uh, uh, responded by saying that the governor, any governor that moves against the new minimum wage uh, will uh, face the uh, Labour's uh, voters' uh, angst next uh, elections, which is in February 2019. So we're still now having this face off. Uh, the federal government is still studying the tripartite panel report that suggested 30,000 naira. The president says the executive branch will study that document, pass it to the National Assembly uh, to go over it and pass it into law. But the key question has been if the federal government will be able to pay 30,000 as new minimum wage, what happens to the state governments? and the private sector. It's a very big conversation about this new minimum wage. One of the big story that is ending the year 2019, uh, adding to the portfolio of what to expect next year. We'll take some of this into conversations later on the program this morning. Meantime, the Vice President, Professor Yomi Oshibajo, has been spending more of his time crisscrossing the country in the current week, expanding the frontiers of the government's interest-free soft loan of initial 10,000 naira to traders. Launched in 2016, the Trader Money Program is now expanding, and the Vice President's been spending most of the week at crisscrossing not just markets, but also touching those who are in uh, agri-business or farmers who produce uh, vegetables and others. And the report says the Vice President will be in the country's uh, uh, Niger Delta uh, region today and perhaps to the weekend on uh, the Trader Money Program. It's one of the social investment program of the Buhari's administration, and we will bring that into some focus as well on the program in just a couple of minutes. Meantime, the Buhari's administration is taking on the rebuilding of the messed up a Papa port and the roads around it. This is one big program that has been reported, not just here, but around the world. But this rebuilding of the Lagos Ibadan Rail, which will terminate into the second largest seaport on the African continent in a Papa, may result in the demolition of some of structures that crept up over the decades when the rail line out of the port was abandoned. Now, some of the structures, according to uh, the government uh, or to yesterday's uh, joint survey of the project so far, may include portions of warehouses that were built over the years and some land reclamations. We need to make way for these new rail projects. Uh, that is the key story here. So the joint inspection done Thursday by the Honorable Minister of Transport, Rotimi Amechi, and the Managing Director of the Nigerian Ports Authority, Ms. Adiza Usman, shows that there will be an increase in the scope of this port and rail project to be presented to President Buhari and the Federal Executive Council for approval in the days, weeks, and months ahead. According to the, them yesterday, according to the Honorable Minister and the MPA Managing Director, the project is expanding and it has to be done in the best interest of Nigeria and Nigeria's businesses. So some companies whose property are located in and around the new corridor or the expansion of the existing corridor of the rail line will have to suffer some consequences. That's part of the conversation, a big story, one mega project that has been left undone for years and years now getting underway. Meantime, of course, you may be aware we get into that time of the year when this warning comes again. The Meteorological Office says the incoming Hamilton dry season will disrupt 
some flight operations in some airports in Nigeria over the coming weeks. We're now entering the second week in the month of November. The Nigeria Meteorological uh, Agency, NIMIT, says passengers should expect some flight delays and some cancellations, uh, cancellations of flight uh, schedules as well in the next coming weeks because of the heavy haze and dust and wind, gusty wind that Hamatan period, this period of the year, will bring till the early part of 2019, early into the new year. So expect some delays, some flight cancellations, and of course, the, limit, the meteorological office is warning those who are around the airports across the country to desist from burning any vegetation in and around the airport to prevent uh, fire, likely fire, affecting the airports and causing more navigational hazards for uh, planes, airplanes that will be taking off and landing across some of the airports around the country. This is something you need to put in your kitty as you plan for your end of year movement. Check with Nimet and check with your local uh, airlines as to the conditions of the weather. Meantime, Nigeria's uh, postal system, Nipos, has revoked operational licenses of 30 courier companies. They were accused of non compliance with industry regulations. Nipos is moving forward with major restructuring and reform, uh, which has made the appointment of KPMG Nigeria as the financial transaction advisor to the reform agenda of NIPOS by the BPS was announced on Wednesday.